cilantro oh. ranch sauce on the mala chicken wing. Think about that sentence. That sentence did not exist until just now. It's good. I love those. That's good. That's a five out of five. Wow. What's going on everybody? Welcome to a very special episode of Fun Bros Food. Today, Andrew, a lot of people have been asking us to film outside of Manhattan. Today we are in Brooklyn. I'm really excited about this video because we're gonna be covering second generation Asian American restaurant owners that have left their kind of conventional path to pursue their dreams of being in the food industry out here in Brooklyn. We're gonna be looking at three different formats. Somebody's gonna be doing identity food, just trying to represent themselves and their narrative in food items. Number two, we're gonna be looking at somebody who's just cooking American food. And number three, somebody who's trying to update their parents' old school business for the modern age of 2020. I'm excited to talk to these owners, hear the stories, but most importantly, eat this food. Let's, Let's go. go. All right, you guys, we are in Bedford and North Fifth. Please, you guys, we're with Martin. Derek, tell us about Juxing. Juxing means American born Chinese. It's a term saying that, hey, you're not quite American, not quite Chinese. So it's a little bit of a, mocking term, we wanted to show that, hey, no, we're, we're the best of both worlds. The juxing um, technically translates directly to rising bamboo, but in another way, it's also hollow bamboo. So in the mocking sense, it means that you're, bam you're Chinese on the outside, but inside you're kind of missing that, you know, that part. But for us, we, we like to see it as rising bamboo, we're, you know, the new generation in America. Oh. We're bringing our Chinese roots with us. Man, we got to get into some of the dishes because I saw some of the food on Yelp and it looks incredible. I took a look at the menu. They have mala wings. We got to try it. Let's do it. Let's get All into right. it. Okay. All right, starting off our meal here at Juxing, I got the mala wings and the chashu bao. Yo, you never see the chashu bao look like this. Oh. Wow, still fluffy. Well, let me just Andrew, show did you, you say the insides. Still fluffy. Oh, yeah. fluffy. Uh, wow. Lop turn chashu bao here at Juxing. Just by itself, that's a great chashu bao. Sweet, savory, still fluffy. Mala, Mala wing. wing. Dip it in this sauce right here. Cilantro oh. ranch sauce on the Mala chicken wing. Think about that sentence. That sentence did not exist until just now. A cilantro ranch go oh. perfect with, oh! Um, that's like a hot and spicy, it has, it has this sweet and this honey sweetness that's coming through along with the Mala. Numbing. Shout out to Anna back there. She's half Chinese, half white, but she bringing, she's really bringing that culture together. That's good. I love those. That's good. That's a five out of five. Wow. All right, let's try this burger. This is the, I'm excited about this Peking duck burger that you got here. Wow. In there we got everything, right? Wow. Peking duck burger. The duck boy. The duck is juicy, Andrew, because this burger got soaked, the bun got soaked in the duck fat. It's dripping. Yo, that really encapsulates what a Peking duck bun is supposed to do, man. Sweet, sweet and sour, sour pork, pork belly. belly. I prefer that to the sweet and sour fried pork. The red braised chicken, their take on Siao Gai. Guys, the red braised chicken. The flavors hit harder, it's stronger, and, and it's more sticky. So if you like soy sauce chicken, you like this. It has the flavors of soy sauce chicken, but the complexion is a lot more like an adobo from the Philippines. You've seen taro fries before, but you've never seen taro tots, especially with that particular sauce. Mm. Wow. Those mm. are some tasty tots. Nori Bomb Burger. There's a hash brown in the middle. Mm. Clearly designed to stick to your ribs and soak up some alcohol content. Duroc pork, pork bun tons. Ooh, spicy. Chrysanthemum, Chrysanthemum Caesar. I got to say, man, the way they did the fusion here is legit, honestly, to be honest, I did not know what to expect coming in, but I was very impressed. You know what I like about Fusion Identity Food? It gets better every year. It gets better every year. All right. That's the best Asian Caesar I've ever had. The fried days kind of serve as anchovies. It gives you a little bit of that fish meat flavor, the umami flavor. Man. All right, you guys, the food was so good here at Chuk Sing Andrew, and I heard Anna was a finalist on uh, Chop. We gotta go talk to her. We just had to talk to the chef. Nice, this is our domain. So how, what was like, I know you're half Chinese, half American. Yeah. So I, is that, how, how did you come up with a lot of those dishes? Um, so a lot of these are um, based on sort of like things that I grew up eating. Like the American side and the Chinese side. We're trying to show a little bit of like 
our childhoods and like our upbringings um, in the food. Identity restaurants, like you know, Asian American identity restaurants, not all of them work out and the flavors don't always come together, but mm -hmm. I think you guys are doing amazing. Thanks, awesome. We just wrapped up an incredibly delicious meal here at Jokes saying congratulations guys. Thank you. Guys. You guys did fusion did right. right. Yo, <laughs> maybe only one out of 10 spots do it right. And you guys did it right. Thank you, thank appreciate you. it. Appreciate that. And uh, we decided to do this because we want to do something that we're passionate about. And we love eating, we love going out to eat, we love out to so we want to do something similar, but on our own terms. So right now we're still working our day jobs. Uh, we both do um, operations and logistics at a small distributor here. Um, actually, it's not that far from here, but it's also here in Brooklyn. We serve, um, that company itself services supermarkets and we do supply. Oh, so you supply. guys know kind of like, had some crossover skills. Yeah, Definitely. Uh, it's, there's a lot of Asian fusion out there, but for us, we're not just Asian fusion, we're Asian American fusion. That's kind of like the key differentiator that we're trying to show. Sure. Absolutely, man. I agree. I felt like you guys flipped the term yep. from empty bamboo to rising bamboo. I'm with it. Congratulations, hey. guys. So on to our second spot in Brooklyn, Andrew. We're just headed right next door. Hey. Yo, what's good, bro? Yo, we are headed to Burger Inc. And we're already here. <laughs> Yo, Randy, what up, man? Uh, up, man, guys? tell us about Burger Inc. Well, basically, me and my cousin, we loved burgers when we were kids. Only time we got it was to basically do uh, events, barbecues, or... Right, because our parents, it's true, like, Chinese, Cantonese parents, Asian parents in general, unless you're, they're more like, I guess with the American side, they just do not cook burgers. No, we never ate burgers growing up. It's not up. a thing that we cooked up. Like, we want to do a gourmet burger on the go versus everyone else. Right, 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 because you're saying you can either get a quick burger and it looks like this, or you can get a gourmet burger and it looks like this and it takes super long and slow Same and steak house. Correct. You're trying to combine the two. Exactly. We got to try some burgers real quick. Let's, Let's go. go. All right, Randy, man, what we cooking? All right, I'm gonna make you the dime, all right, which is the bone marrow burger. I'm gonna make you an off the menu burger, which is the bay burger. All right, so this is stacked up. All right, Randy, we're about to dive into some burgers, man. Can you tell me about this one, though? So this is the most simple basic burger that you get in a steakhouse. It just consists of bone marrow, you see, which is on top. Uh huh. American cheese, white, woo, and a six ounce uh, Angus beef patty. Bone marrow burger, the dawn. All right. Woo! That's very. That's a very simple burger, but it's got a lot of flavor. Yo, thank you for giving me the steakhouse experience. Because to be honest, I don't know when I was ever gonna have it. <laughs> and we don't, we don't go to that many steakhouses. I know. I, I... <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Tell us what's in this, because this is crazy. This is like down. a whole breakfast. So, how we came up with this, my girl said she went to steak and eggs. I had no steak in the house. <laughs> so I'm like, <laughs> I had burgers, you know, so. Bay Burger. Off the right. menu item here at Burger Inc, guys. Oh my gosh, look at those layers. Yo, this was this was my favorite, man. Thank you, thank you. I love this, man. So I let's start off with this. All right, okay. this is the Dynamite Mac, which is jalapeno mac and cheese poppers. Whoa, I didn't expect it to stretch like so, that. So yeah, bro. you got that cheese stretch. Yo, bro. this is uh, straight Buzzfeed tier. You Correct. know what I mean? Like yes. straight uh, was it? insider foods. Insider foods. We would feature out insider foods for this as well. Oh, I didn't expect. Oh, I didn't <laughs> know it was gonna do all this. Wow. That was good. Oh, that's the best mac and cheese ball I've ever had. You guys gotta come here and try it. This is the crew, which um, is the name you share with your crew. So loaded fries, we have pulled pork, pernil, uh, Angus beef. Pernil? Pernil. Yes, you mean Yo, like I got the, the Dominican, Dominican, Puerto Rican yeah. pork, okay. The crew, loaded fries. Pernil, I've never had pernil on fries. Yo, that's pernil. I can really taste that pernil. That comes through. It hits the spot, right? See, because the other loaded fries I've had were just like uh, pulled pork maybe, mm -hmm. other things like that, but the pernil got a whole flavor of its own. I could totally see that eating that at a ball game. Yeah. Crazy. Both spots for Burger Inc. and for Juxing, I said, you know what? The food quality is A1. People like you and the second generation owners, if they still carry over that immigrant work ethic from their parents at all, you're gonna be okay. Yeah. Because your parents, our parents, they came here with a lot less and Correct. did a lot. All right, hey, Randy, Appreciate good shit. Randy. Thank you guys. Keep Thank it going, you, man. We got all the info in the description below. All Yo. right. All right, you guys, in our last and final spot, we are on Chinatown here on Division Street. Andrew, there is a famous story that was in the Wall Street Journal. Jackson took over his parents' old school Chinatown butcher shop and is putting his own twist on it, bringing it into 2020, keeping it old school, but serving the community. And I think that if you look at all three stories we've covered, Two in Brooklyn, one in Manhattan. The first one, Juxing, was all about a mixture, a, a new fusion.
between the Chinese American identity, Cantonese, and, and the American identity. Uh -huh. The second spot, Burger Inc., that spot was all just about, can we be American? Can you accept me cooking a burger looking different? I love the burger culture. I'm cooking a great burger. Can the American public accept it? And this last and final spot is a different format because it's repurposing or retaking over your parents' old school shop and bringing it into 2020. Let's, Let's go. go. What up, Jefferson? Hey, what's going on? Yo, good to meet you, man. All right, so we're here at your uh, family's meat shop. Yeah. 47 Division Street, that's the name of it, so you can't miss it. Um, I know you took over recently. Tell me about your goals right now with the shop. Wall Street Journal wrote something about you. I saw the post on Reddit. You were advertising uh, how to get uh, really well-priced meats here, especially during the pandemic. You're trying to help people out, trying to just do something nice, and I don't know if it worked out economically for you guys or not, but like, what was your goal behind that? My goal is, yo, New York's hurting, man. Like. New York City is hurting. People are getting laid off. People are furloughed. You know, we're a, we're a local business that is the epitome of FUBU. Built by us for us. Us being Chinatown and Chinese immigrants. I mean, in the very beginning, it was it was mainly about those that were hurting. Um, but as time went on, this is a business. This is my family's livelihood. You can see it's not full. You know, it's not packed. It's not full. Um, we don't have a lot of turnover at the moment, so we are hurting. Uh, we are we are working with other people who are providing free groceries to, to families that need it. Um, we're trying to partner with other places that are doing free meals, specifically Heart of Diner, where they specifically cater towards um, elderly Asians within the Two Bridges area here locally. Serious dude. He don't f around. So we had to step outside because um, it was getting pretty loud in there. But yeah, last question is just like, what advice do you have for like ABCs and people whose parents, you know, kind of own like a pretty backbreaking uh, business, but they want to continue it, but they also want to balance it with the things they want to do themselves. What's more important to you, your heritage, your tradition, your legacy, and honoring your parents or going out and slaving, or not slaving, but working like, you know, a regular nine to five for 70, 80 grand a year for some dude that really doesn't give a shit. Everybody forgets that 80% of the stock market is comprised of commodities. The Maslow's hierarchy of needs, you know, what's the foundation? It's food, you, you need to eat, sleep, you need companionship, you know. Whether the economy is good or bad, everybody has to eat, you know. Whether the economy is good or bad, you still need a place to sleep. You know, it's, it's hard work, but it pays off. Don't, you know, don't shy away from it. Stop reading, stop reading all these f***ing, you know, self-help books and just do it, you know. One of these days, man, I'd love to come back and hear your opinions on some other issues. Good, sure. to, good to see an opinionated young man. You sure. got drive, man. Thank you. So here are my takeaways from today. Number one, Chinese American fusion dishes are getting better year by year as younger chefs learn from the iterations before them. Maybe identity food, as we call it, is finally telling the story that we always wanted. Number two, just because you're Asian, it doesn't mean you have to cook anything Asian at all. You're American too, and that's one of the few advantages of having this complicated and often troubling identity. And number three, the phrase family legacy isn't heard often from people of our generation. So it is refreshing to hear someone take it so seriously. You know what? Let me know in the comments down below what you think about all this. And until next time, we out. Peace. See, that's a Jok Sing Dai. That's a Jok Sing Dai. Chuk Sing Dai, it's the Chuk Sing Dai, Brooklyn born Chuk Sing Dai.